Welcome to another episode of last week's comics today. I've got a pretty decent stack here and right on top we have the new volume of Sakamoto Days. My wife got this in the mail this week. I think volume 8 is coming out in June so I'm, I'm looking forward to reading that. I'll read the two together. Things left off with an attack on an office building and I flip through this and it ends with people falling out of a plane. I'm like, oh man, I can't wait to read that. How does that happen? But, huge fan of this series. Love it. Looking forward to reading this. All of this I have read, so we're going to start with Steelwater, which is the end of the series. And things certainly do end. It's not how I expected it to be. I do recommend grabbing the entire series. It should be collected both in trade and there's probably... Since it's only 18 issues, uh, there might be a one-volume collection at some point. But we have um, plenty of standoffs, multiple people. Everyone's got um, different agendas that they're going after at the time. Some people in Stillwater, some people outside of Stillwater. And uh, there are definitely some deaths here. Some deaths where they're resurrected and somewhere they're not. Uh, it's a great series. Highly recommended. And I don't think I'm going to say anything other than that. Batman and the Joker, The Deadly Duo. This is issue six of seven. So there's one issue left. And uh, here we have the real antagonist of the series. It was not who I thought it was, which is actually her father. She was dead. Legitimately dead. All of that is recapped here in the beginning. Very helpful. She was actually buried and then busted out of her coffin. It's all explained here. It's um, I'm a fan of, of recapping within a book. So we wind up with... Uh, they're actually in this cavern. We've got Batman, Joker, Harley. So everyone is together except... Uh, there he is. There's Gordon. And a weird suit for Joker. But um, we've got Gordon, we've got the father, Batman, obviously, uh, Joker, Harley. Some big speeches this issue. Everything gets explained. There um, some fights happen as well. He's got uh, some extra blades, some longer ones. So fights, there is a key that becomes important for currently unknown reasons. This is not the first severed limb this week. So there's this key, and Joker was apparently working with uh, Evil Lady. He wants this key, and Batman puts it around his neck and just says, come and get it, which is pretty awesome. Like, they're dealing with this. Meanwhile, they've got their own private fight going on, and it's pretty awesome. I don't know why. So Bruce builds this whatever... Joker's wearing, and why would he give him those feet? That's a little weird. Uh, he's got the same feet. Anyway, it's um, shipping up better than I expected. So it's not as straightforward as I thought it was. There are some twists in there. There's still a mystery to be resolved regarding that key. Who knows what's going on with that? And... I don't know, this is a better issue than the last few, which is good. Poison Ivy, issue 11. Poison Ivy, the title, has just received an award for something, and I was kind of confused by that, because I'm like, well, the series is pretty good, but I, I wouldn't say that it's, like, standout and spectacular. But this issue, in particular, is quite good. So we've got Ivy and Janet from HR. They um, are continuing their spa day weekend gone wrong from last issue. And this issue is great. There's a lot of talk about the spores that Ivy has been spreading for this entire series. Sort of what's going on with those and the current state of them. They are evolving. The art, as always, well, when it's from Takara, the art is phenomenal.
I don't know. This, I think, is when the book is firing on all cylinders. Yeesh. This was a great issue. I wish the rest of the series were like this. Batman 134. I don't know how many issues to go until 900. I don't think it's next issue, however. But we have Batman in another universe... And we've got uh, information on the red mask, and we've got a face there in the background, if you could see it. Might be a spoiler. But we get um, what that guy has been up to, what he is doing. We get uh, sort of a protracted fight with this universe's version of Ghostmaker, which is kind of fine, except Batman gets skewered pretty early on in a fight, and then just continues fighting for three quarters of the issue and I'm like look I know you just survived a fall from space but like even you have your friggin limits it ends with this <laughs> and as a big fan of the man bat ninjas from early Grant Morrison like I like this I like it a lot also, we have this continuation of Tim Drake's storyline and Drake looking for uh, Bruce, which I still have problems with. But uh, he gets a new suit, sort of a multiversal suit. It's a ridiculously large R. I don't think it needs to be that big. But there's a nice moment for him, and uh, I still question all of this. I'm waiting for, I guess, 900 to see how this ends, and then 901 to see what the next arc is, but I question every issue whether or not I should still be reading Batman. Mosley, issue 3. It feels like it's been more than a month since issue 2, and uh, so I had to remember where things had left off. There is a recap here in the beginning, but that recapped the state of the world. As far as the main character, he wakes up from a dream sequence and I had to remember where he had left off but he, he had run into his ex-wife and there's a lot of new information here regarding certainly their personal history their family in general but sort of the world as well and it's uh, it's really good there is another fight scene uh, I still think he's Thor <laughs> with this magical hammer it's very strange but I am along for the ride. We get some cool character designs like this lady. I don't know. The hammer to... Oh, sh I just closed it. But the hammer looks like a fist to me, right? Is that just me? That's straight up a fist. Anyway, I'm enjoying this. I think the art's great. The story is fun. It's interesting. And if you're into fun and interesting, then I think you should give it a try. Adventures of Superman, John Kent, issue two of six until sales become good enough to make it an ongoing or it gets canceled. Um, this was set up to be, I thought, about Ultraman, and it seems to be more like a Tom Taylor's greatest hits. So we've got Ultraman, we've got Injustice seen here on the cover. And I will be spoiling the last page of this, so if you don't want to see that, you can skip ahead, but you have a few minutes, moments at least, before I get there. So, we get some history regarding, well, John and Ultraman. John had gone off with his grandfather, he was kidnapped during Mendes' run, which I refuse to read and uh, kept in a volcano for five years where he was essentially powerless and uh, I don't think Ultraman outright tortured him but you know it's a kind of torture anyway we've got the return of some Earth 2 characters like Red Tornado and Velazad I'm a big fan of them and as I said we are getting Injustice so I'm about to show the end of this and this happens for one thing so we had seen this style text box in issue one and then this happens where his clothes just 
change from one thing to another. So he was wearing this, and then suddenly he's not. That has yet to be explained, but Ultraman gets up, and then Injustice Superman. Oof. So that's pretty crazy. And uh, I thought this six issue series was going to be about John and Ultraman. John possibly confronting PTSD. Um, that he's already dead by the end of issue two. I don't know where the other four issues are going to go. I'm along for the ride. I certainly want to see what's going on with these new powers. There's. Mm, I've skimmed the solicitation text for the next couple of issues. I can't remember what's happening in there, but it does seem to be, again, the sort of greatest hits style John traveling the multiverse. And there's a reference to Deceased in here as well, which I found interesting. But um, it's good. I'm enjoying it. And hopefully other people do as well and it gets picked up and continues beyond the planned six issues. Saga 63. Fiona Staples on art, as always, is just beautiful. I love that. So we have two children with dead parents, dead fathers specifically. And we had run into her last issue. She was telling the mother that uh, she could bring someone back from the dead. And there's this magic powder that, in this explanation, she explains, allows her to do that. So the children are sort of intent on bringing their dead fathers back to life, which is never going to go well. <laughs> It's never good. But anyway, they are intent. They are doing things in order to enact that plan. And um, it's, it's for me, this sort of building dread of what's going to happen. What are they going to do to achieve this? And then what is the results going to be? So I both dread and look forward to seeing what happens there. I don't want to flip through too much of the rest of this but we do see another returning character so that's fun and it's it's a great issue it does feel like again once um once again longer than a month since the last issue has come out but it's hard for me to keep track i don't really trust my brain anymore i think i'm it seems too early for me for my brain to be failing but it does feel like my brain is failing but um this i uh, loved it and the last page as always is oof I can't wait for 64 this place issue 7 and I think since the last issue came out we have learned that the series is ending with issue 10 so it will be two 5 issue arcs and um, I'm okay with that I'm not overly upset I would have continued reading but if it wraps up in 10 I will accept that because this is exceptional it's probably getting my pick of the week but I'll figure that out in another minute or two so these guys had shown up to the farm last issue we've got these hands with too many fingers down at the bottom and they wind up encountering the ghosts that are on this farm <laughs> things did not go well for essentially anyone this issue but uh, the ladies are tied up there's some ghost encounters there is really an inappropriate use of a chair this issue it's spectacular but um, this ends somewhere that just raises it to the next level and I want issue 8 right now it's it's exceptionally good the Witcher, The Ballad of Two Wheel Wolves, issue four. This is the end of the miniseries. I did do, because um, I've talked before, I really enjoyed both the writing and the art on this. Uh, there is a solicitation for the collection of this, and I think it's listed as Witcher volume seven. And 
as I said, I did look into these two. I think they have done previous Witcher work, so I'm probably going to wind up grabbing those because I thoroughly enjoyed this. I think the art is phenomenal. I do especially like the way he draws Geralt. But the writing, writing is also, I think, spot on for Witcher. Look at Geralt. It's amazing. Colors, too. Props to, props to everyone on this team. So the the thing about Witcher and the early book adventures, which I'm, I'm a big fan of, is it's familiar fables, legends, classics um, with a twist. And the root of this is Little Red Riding Hood, but that's kind of subplot. It's um, the the real story going on here is this town, and the town was taken over by. Um, by this this family of women, these sisters, and the uh, the original townspeople don't like that this that these sisters have come in. And there's a werewolf in the mix, and uh, there's this very angry guy who is extremely entertaining, and everything he says involves some kind of swear. I guess not that sentence, but well, there he's saying horse on. But uh, it's just really well done. And if you have read and I assume played the Witcher game, then one of the story elements will seem familiar. It certainly did to me while I was reading this. I'm like, wait a minute, I know that story. And the Geralt even says, yeah. he's like, I've heard this story before. And I had that same thought moments before. Uh, this, it ends well. I hope these two do more. And I will be looking to see what they've done before, because I would like more. Northern Blood, Issue 3. I just recently grabbed Issue 1. I'm told Issue 2 hasn't come out yet, which I find interesting. So I haven't read this yet. I did flip through it, and there's one thing that's a problem. Someone printed the wrong file. Yeah, so the rest of it... It's higher res. For some reason, this one page is low res. If this gets collected, hopefully that gets corrected, but I don't think it's going to ruin the story too much. We do have, I'll show off this. We've got this guy. Look at the size of that bracer. I think it's enormous. And also this guy. So I will hold off on reading this. Maybe until issue two comes out, but I might just read this and see what out of context craziness they're up to this issue. But it's um, Nazis, it's Viking zombies, and it's uh, the first issue was a lot of fun. So that is everything that I got this week. I'm really looking forward to next week. Uh, it looks like everything except for one book is non big too, and I love when that happens. I do think I've been reading. Too much, certainly Batman recently, but um, I did make a comment <laughs> about severed limbs, and I'm gonna show this off. So if you don't want to be <laughs> spoiled on Batman, Batman gets his fucking hand cut off. What the hell's gonna happen there? I don't know. I guess we'll find out, but he's been stabbed through the chest and now has a missing hand and somehow he's still going to come out on top because he's Batman. As far as pick of the week goes, I'm giving it to fuck this place because man, this book is good. It's it's so good. It's it's just incredible. I love it. The writing, the art, all of it. I love everything about it. So that is everything that I got this week. As always, I get all of my books from a local comic shop. If you don't know where yours is, you can use this URL to find the one closest to you. Thanks for watching.